You've met a lot of powerful men. You've met guys like Saddam Hussein. How was he as well? He was steady when I met him. I mean, I met him twice uh, in 1993 with a group of, of uh, MEPs, ironically, as I might be about to become one, uh, just briefly and in a big crowd. But I met him man to man in 2002 in the summer, uh, just before the war, therefore. Uh, man to man, translator, maybe one or two almost, you could say, tete-a-tete, -tete, as they say in diplomatic circles. He was steady. He was uh, not crazy at all, uh, not nearly as dangerous as the people that came to power in Iraq after we uh, toppled them. He was a dictator, of course. Uh, he did a lot of bad things. He did a lot of good things. You have to, if you're going to be historical about things rather than be led by you know, Sky News or the front page of the Daily Mail, uh, you have to be able to, as I did with you with Tony Blair earlier, for example. Mm -hmm. I could have said to you, Tony Blair's a tow rag from A to Z, but that wouldn't be true. I told you the good things that he did, mm -hmm. and you have to do that with uh, when you're looking at uh, eras or leaders or systems unless you're going to be dishonest. Because mm -hmm. a lot of these men, do you think they were killed then through, from money, for money, the oil and the gold? Well, I do think Iraq was attacked uh, for oil. It was attacked for Israel. It was attacked, though, mainly to demonstrate America's overwhelming power in the world, mm -hmm. what we call hegemony, the hegemony, the dominance of uh, the U.S. empire in the world. And paradoxically, of course, uh, it proved the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. It proved that the Americans don't rule the world, and they never will.